from the application and all that. My name is Mrs. Ajala Olushola. I'm one of the food vendors for the school, the food to school. I heard of it from the media. It was announced that those who are interested should apply. It. And I applied for it, I was screened. Then I was chosen to serve. Then the financial aspects of it, I now benefit from it, unlike when I was idle at home. Without missing words, Nigeria is now more determined than ever through this administration to bring this problem under control. Participants are expected to fulfill the theme of the training, identifying potential threats and evolving appropriate mitigation measures. Ismail Musa, NTA News. And the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Oloni Shaki, has commended President Muhammad Buhari for his commitment in ensuring that the military carries out operations in line with constitutional provision and global best practices. He stated this to the House Committee of, on Defense on Oversight Visit in Abuja. National Assembly Correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. Presentation by the Chief of Defense Staff focuses on successes recorded, completion level of capital projects, and release of intervention funds in 2017 and 2018. He appreciates the efforts of the federal government to enhance military capacity and the Committee for Ensuring Timely Release of Funds on several security issues. We have followed the due process in implementing these projects. Some of these projects were completed in the year 2018. We'll look at all our discussions within the 2019 appropriations that will come to us soon to find uh, solutions to what uh, the DHQ demanded from the committee. Commandant of the Nigerian Defense Academy briefed the committee on ongoing projects for spiritual development of cadets. This, according to him, is part of their training to enable them understand the impact of reaction on the battlefield. At the Defense Industry Corporation of Nigeria, also in Kaduna State, the committee inspects platforms as part of the company's performance within the period under review. Other achievements by the company includes procurement of local materials for production of military operation tools and setting up of a factory in Kachia for production of primer cap needed for production of bullets. So now we, we are relevant to the Air Force, Navy, Army and of course the security agencies. Find a way to assist you more so that you can produce more ammunition for us. The committee finds out that the Armed Forces Commander and Staff College Judge in Kaduna State received 54% capital appropriation of 2017 and 38% of 2018. Commandant of the College Air Vice Marshal Lawal Alao said pre-qualification of contractors is completed. Committee Chairman Muktar Ali Biatara said the committee will look into the lack and later release of funds for the institution. Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. And away from security now, President Mohamed Buhari has described the
The next four years is quite significant for Nigeria as the people have a clear choice to either sustain the building of a new Nigeria or return to the nation's tainted past that only favored the opportunist opportunistic few. Well, this was at the formal launch of the APC campaign manual, as well as the next level document, which captures the aspiration and projection of the governing party for the next four years. State House correspondent Damu Sambu reports that the president made a case for peaceful and decent campaigns by all candidates ahead of the general elections. Four years ago, we promised Nigeria's real change. The road may have been difficult, but President Muhammad Buhari said the governing APC has in the last three and a half years laid the foundation for a strong, stable and prosperous Nigeria. He said although the foundational works is neither glamorous nor often visible, but given the debt of decay, deterioration and despair that Nigeria had sunk into, such works are vital towards achieving the kind of country everyone desires. We are certain that these first few years have put us in good stead to press on the next level of building an even stronger nation for our people. The governing APC, he said, has clearly delivered on his pre-election promises of securing the country, fighting corruption and resuscitating the economy through diversification. We implemented a responsible and transparent fiscal plan for the challenging economic times that saw us doing more even with lesser oil revenues. Grand scale corruption perpetrated at the highest level of government is now a thing of the past. The nation's wealth is now being invested in capital projects to expand infrastructure and connect people goods and opportunities by rail, road, and air. Through the National Social Investment Program, we are providing direct support to over 13 million Nigerians who need it. Despite the giant strides, President Muhammad Buhari acknowledged that there is still much to do and the next level of efforts will focus on job creation across the various sectors and the people that are still in poverty will have a direct way out and up through the expanded social investment programs as well as an end to the farmers' hardest conflicts being cynically manipulated by political actors. Perhaps our biggest ambition yet is the overhaul of our education sector. Every child counts. We will remodel 10,000 schools every year. We know that to succeed, moral integrity and conscience must continue to form the dominant character of our nation and its leadership. Nigeria, the president said, more than ever before, needs a stable and people-focused government to move the development of the country forward. Join us on this journey to the next level of a prosperous, strong, and stable Nigeria. The achievements and projections I have enumerated above are just a summary of what we have done and what we intend to do in our next term. If Nigerians graciously give us a second term mandate.
that's INEC formally blows the whistle for campaigns to begin, the president called for decorum on the part of political actors. I urge all candidates and supporters of all political parties to go about the campaigns peacefully and decently. We have no other country but Nigeria. Let us not set it ablaze. because of politics or sectional interests. The high point of the event was the launch of the campaign manual containing major achievements and experiences to guide supporters of the AP.
policy as well as the next level document capturing the aspirations and projections of the governing party for the next four years. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Muhammad Buhari Oshibajo Dynamic Support Group is mobilizing electorates at the grassroots to secure 40 million votes to ensure the re-election of President Buhari in 2019. The political support group stated this at a stakeholders meeting in Abuja. Political correspondent Saliu Abdullahi reports. This stakeholders forum for national patrons, zonal officers, and coordinators of the Muhammadu Buhari Oshibajo Dynamic Support Group, MBO, is coming at a time political campaigns for presidential and national assembly elections commenced. It provides another opportunity for members share ideas and strategize towards the actualization of the desire to ensure continuity in governance in view of the achievements recorded by the Buhari-led administration. The physical things that you see that is an achievement of Buhari, one, 2019, this is an achievement. What of agriculture now? And of course the settlement of uh, over 7 trillion naira, payment of debts, contractors, salaries and of course the arrears of the pensioners and a lot of other things which we didn't even look. The strategy is when you see your brother spread the good news, your brother will see our cousin, he will spread the good news. We embark on sensitizing the citizen that they should get their voters card. And currently they are doing that. Muhammadu Buhari Oshibaju Dynamic Support Group's membership cuts across patriotic Nigerians committed to supporting the APC-led administration towards building a progressive, peaceful and united nation. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. 
the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has kick-started his campaign for the 2019 election with the unveiling of his campaign policy document this Monday. Atiku, during the launch on his Facebook page, working again with the cooperation of all Nigerians, also reaffirmed his commitment to give Nigerian workers a living wage as well as making government invest on infrastructural facilities. And moving on, for Nigeria to achieve her full potentials, leaders such as President Muhammad Buhari are needed to make the country work for the greater good of all. Pastor Felix Liberty of Divine Revelation Church stated this during an interview with NTA News in Abuja. Speaking with NTA News on current challenges in the country and how the present administration is working to improve the socio-economic well-being of Nigerians, Pastor Felix says the citizens support the federal government for any meaningful development to take place. Mr. President is not a wicked leader. Mr. President... It's not the president that will take Nigeria as his own um, home uh, property. It's not. What he's trying to do right now is trying to tighten all the loopholes where corruption used to engulf this country. It's not so many of us that love that kind of a thing. So what he's trying to do is that this country must stand. The use of this country has a right to live. He observed that the ongoing fight against corruption is among pragmatic policies that make President Buhari credible and eligible to, make, to take Nigeria to greater heights. And the need to pass the local government autonomy bill to pour through the absent, assent of two-thirds of state of as, House of Assembly is again on the front burner. As guests on Good Morning Nigeria say, it is the only way to rewrite the narrative of underdevelopment at the grassroots. The guests, however, emphasize that local government autonomy must be practiced with checks and balances. Lydia Samson tells us more. The struggle for local government autonomy has been long and complex. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria, like most Nigerians, believe local governments are not just closest to the people, but also areas where governance and development should be visible. However, to make this happen, getting two-thirds of the state houses of assembly to endorse local government autonomy bill already passed by the National Assembly remains a mirage. The local government, which is supposed to be the basis, the foundation of our democratic project, our democratic enterprise, is on a shaky foundation. National Assembly has done its work. As it starts now, it's left for the State House of Assembly to do its work. What the President said at the inaugural speech is very good. But you know, this is a constitutional matter. While condemning the overbearing influence of state governors over local government administrators, the guests stressed that democracy should begin with local governments. And the Constitution makes it very clear that the money of local government shall be used within the jurisdiction of that local government. It's not like that in most cases. If, if the monopoly is that the, local, the, the, the governors uh, have to take charge of everything, then how can I perform? So I think one of the best things that will ever happen in this country, and as far as this National Assembly is concerned, before they wind up you know, their tenure, is to, to ensure that the local government autonomy bill passes into law. They equally urge young political aspirants without experience to start from local governments rather than seeking exalted offices. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Trial of former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshi, continues today in Lagos. Let's hear from Elizabeth for this and other stories from that zone. Hello, Elizabeth. And thanks for joining us in Lagos. Four prosecution witnesses, all bankers, today told the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos how 1.219 billion naira siphoned from the coffers of the federal government in June 2014, evacuated from Akura Airport in Ondo State, was lodged into three accounts company accounts and personal accounts of the former governor of Ikete State, Ayo Fayoshi. Details of this report will come in our subsequent bulletin. 
Lagos State Governor Akiomi Ambadi has assured investors that the state remains a viable investment destination that will give them good returns. Governor Akiomi Ambadi gave the assurance at the closing session of the 2018 National Convention of the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship Nigeria held at the Police College Ikeja Nosausula reports. Attributing the success the state has recorded over the years to the fact that government recognizes the role of God in its progress and growth. Governor Ambody said the state has many more opportunities as well as an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. As a government, we are determined and God willing, we shall continue to achieve an all-inclusive progress and prosperity in this state. A lot of our members have operated below optimum level and I believe that uh, this trust that they have received will remove the cloud over their heads, will remove the barrier and the Lord will open a door that no man can shut. I want to encourage them to continue as they allow many more people to come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and make our nation Nigeria a better place for everybody to live in. We believe that this is prophetic not only for the fellowship but the entire nation. God is setting an open door of prosperity, an open door of peace, an open door of emancipation, of advancement unto us in this country. National President of the Gospel Businessmen Fellowship, Ifai Odedu, added that posterity would forever be kind to Governor Ambody for putting in numerous projects to empower the people, especially to tackle poverty. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. Are you aware that hydroquinone and mercury are highly toxic chemicals that can lead to the death of the user? In spite of knowing this, many people still apply these chemicals for several reasons. This is why dermatologists have come, have come out to highlight the effects of this unheld trend at a workshop in Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. Skin bleaching has more than ever before become more popular in many African countries, Nigeria inclusive. In achieving this, users apply several chemicals which dermatologists say are harmful to not just the outlay of the skin, but to several internal organs. These skin and health experts we are quick to point out that the effects of skin bleaching outweighs its benefits by far, adding that the acts can give birth to cancer, skin irritation, and damages the melanin. And it can lead to what is termed hyper, uh, refractive hyperpigmentation, that is like a permanent tanning of the skin. Majorly about 80% of stretch marks are being caused by using of bleaching cream. You are going to like make sure that every year from age 18, you have your breast examined. Then you have to like do some other things like pass men to check your screen for cervical cancer. There were reactions from participants. Now I've learned about the calculation that we must calculate to get it right. I should try as much as possible to avoid the hot sun, most especially from 10 to 4 o'clock. The workshop was also used to empower several women. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And that's a contribution from Lagos. Time now to join Ogochukuka in our Benin Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Ogochukuka. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. The wind of peace is prevailing in the Niger Delta region with the oil-bearing communities expressing readiness to protect the oil facilities within their localities. This gave impetus to examine the significance of this gesture towards sustaining peace in the region. Steve Lodai Mokulu completes the report. The pipelines and facilities which traverse the nooks and crannies of the Niger Delta region have been the targets of the militants who use the facilities as beds to draw attention of the federal government to the socio-economic development of the region. The incessant attacks on the facilities and rupturing of oil pipelines is now attracting condemnations from the oil-bearing communities with an appeal by the host communities through its parent body, HOSCOM, to engage the direct indigents in the protection and surveillance of these facilities. 
Whose come is also swing for the speedy passage of the host community's petroleum bill, which had been at the National Assembly, as well as the relocation of oil companies' office headquarters to the Niger Delta region. We wish to use this medium to call on the federal government and the National Assembly to put on record the necessary machinery in motion to ensure host community petroleum bill should be passed speedily. History of the Federal Pipeline Surveillance and Protection dates back to 2009, when host communities of Nigerian producing oil and gas, Coscom, came up with a blueprint on how to effectively police the pipelines against vandalism in their communities. From Warren, Steve Lona and Waukuro, NTA News. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, wants civil servants to exhibit high level of transparency and accountability to contribute to the growth of the nation's economy. She stated this in an interview at a special Thanksgiving service to mark the retirement of the head of service at those state, Gladys Idao in Benin. Ifoma Okafo reports. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, says it is imperative for civil servants to serve with dignity and improve on their activities, especially now that the federal government is intensifying efforts to revive the nation's economy. She scored the Edo State's former head of service, Gladys Edaho High, saying plans are on to reposition the nation's civil service for capacity building, performance management, and application of modern technology to enhance their commitment to duty. Having added so much value to the civil service and to the government, I am happy to rejoice with my sister and my colleague as she retires honorably and with so much joy and dignity. And I want other civil servants to emulate her. Leadership entails a lot of qualities. She wants to carry everybody that he's working with along. Because if you think you are the boss, you want to exercise that power, you cannot achieve anything. Gladys Idaho joined the state civil service in 1985 as an administrative secretary and rose through the ranks to become the state's head of service in 2015. In Benin, a former Ukafo, NTA News. And now talking election matters, the Institute for Media and Society has been enhancing the capacity of journalists in the South-South region on ways to make coverage of the electoral process in the country better. It is a two-day training which centered on an overview of broadcast media performance in previous and recent electoral processes. In collaboration with the European Union support to democratic governance in Nigeria, this training served as an experience sharing time to strengthen competence and capability on broader democratic governance issues. It dwelt on performance of the media on election coverage from all fronts. Going into 2019, it is important you know, to uh, have this kind of activity to look at what went wrong in 2015, what did the media do well, what did they not do well, and then as we go to 2019, uh, how do we do it? Uh, we have problems covering politics because most of the reporters or most of the players uh, are not well trained. And there is a continuous need for training, continuous need to keep reminding ourselves of our primary role as builders, uh, the, the importance of development journalism. The participants are on the same page, saying there is room for improvement in the planning of election coverage to resource sharing and the use of new media. Learn more about security of the journalists, how to fare reportage, also look at the contents and do researches before the election. So a lot is expected at the end of the day. There is need for us as journalists to be more conscious. From my experience in the past, there have always been issues of security for journalists, poor welfare for journalists. Other aspects deliberated upon are proper voter education, the need for collaboration among media houses for them to cover elections professionally. We take a break now. Nationwide continues in a moment. Please stay tuned. The speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. 
the Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom Peace and unity Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. My name is Matthew. I am the president of the Association of Retired War Affected Police Officers who were in eastern Nigeria before the outbreak of the Civil War. In 2000, the federal government granted us amnesty and retired all those of us who were originally dismissed. From 2007, we started appealing to respective governments of the Federation to retire us according to the terms of the amnesty. And for 10 years, we were fighting without anybody listening to us. It took the president a very short time to decide that we deserve justice. 2017, they started paying these benefits. We owe this to President Muhammadu Buhari, who graciously granted us this favor. Nigeria, a land of promise, land of potential, rich in oil, arable land and solid minerals, yet hunger, joblessness, homelessness and poverty are widespread. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered from hospitals without drugs, schools without teachers and a huge infrastructure deficit. Clearly, we are yet to reach our full potential and one of the reasons is because people choose bad leaders. Some even sell their conscience for a few thousand naira for 2019 elections. Don't sell your vote. Don't sell your future. Don't buy the people's lives. Vote selling is a crime against yourself. You will spend the next four years paying for it. Vote buying is against the law. Politicians, stop buying votes. People, stop selling your future. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thank you for staying tuned. Nationwide continues now. Even as flood recedes in most parts of the country, National Emergency Management Agency says it will continue to double its efforts to meet the welfare needs of flood victims across the country. Director General of the agency, Mustafa May Haja, stated this during the agency's direct distribution of relief materials in one of the IDP camps in Zungeru, Niger State. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. Since the occurrence of the 2018 flood disasters across the country that ravaged some parts of the area, with many lives lost and property worth billions of naira destroyed, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has been on top of its game vis-a-vis -vis rescue, recovery and provision of relief materials to affected victims. This act has prompted more support from across the globe. Director General of NEMA, Mustafa Mehadja, says the agency will continue to make life more meaningful to the affected victims. The door-to-door -door direct distribution of relief materials to IDPs, the NEMA's boss said, targets a family of six that will last for a period of one month. The destructions and plan for the reconstruction and recovery of all the lost properties and other items. And the government, I assure you, will look into the matter with all seriousness. This is commendable. Uh, it is something we appreciate as far as we are concerned in Niger State. As you can know, uh, every disaster management is everybody's business. 
Some of the beneficiaries thank the federal government for the care and support. Happy. We appreciate the, the government. The Director General later paid a courtesy visit to the Deputy Governor of Niger State, Ahmed Mohammed, and thanked the state government for the support accorded the agency so far. From Zungeru in Niger State, Iliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. And following recommendations by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to reduce global warming from 2 degrees Celsius to 1.5, the Global Initiative for Food Security and Ecosystem Presentation has advised Nigerians to embark on massive forestation programs and climate smart agriculture. Executive Director of the initiative, David Michael Terungwa, gave the advice in Abuja. We must help our people who are the most vulnerable, the farmers, because he no longer predicts how the rain will fall. Thank God for the irrigation system that is being practiced in most of parts of the country. It's a climate smart agricultural practice also. So we need to teach our farmers and our people to how to adapt to climate change. We have abundance gas, it's enough. So why don't we go to clean technologies? And the group also advocates for reduction of gas emission in the area of transportation. And to health issues now, one of the major reasons why many people die of diabetes is for ignorance of their status or lack of proper management. Well, this is what the Precious Diabetes Foundation is trying to correct by sensitizing families on the causes, prevention, and care in line with the theme of the 2018 World Diabetes Day. Diabetes concerns every family. Momso Damien Dati reports. Patience Paul is a middle-aged woman, a wife and mother of three children. She's heading to an open space meeting where other women alongside their husbands and children are already gathered to receive detailed and professional awareness on diabetes. Is canned about six point something million people in Nigeria are living with diabetes. Without sugar in our body, our body cannot function. Now, when the sugar is in excess, our body can equally shut down. We are into eating of too much junk, too much fat, too much salt, refined food, highly processed. People end up with diabetes as they continue in this kind of, uh, you know, habits. With practical lessons on how to cook healthy diet, patients and other participants are also privileged to undergo free glucose tests and blood pressure check, all the sporting activities and games, plus a bonus of trying out the special balanced diet delicacies prepared by the professionals. Everyone taught us that it's not until one is diagnosed of diabetes before you start watching what you eat. So it's better to start, whether you have it now or not, you should start early to plan your meals, healthy meals to eat. An eye opener on ways to manage diabetes with food exercises and the help of family members. Armed with this knowledge and skills, one can be sure that patients Paul and her colleagues will return home to make a positive difference in their families and the larger society. Momso Damien Ati. And we now link up our Kaduna Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you, Abdullahi. Vivian and I warm welcome to Kaduna. Politicians in Jigao State have been asked to ensure decorum and violence-free electioneering as campaign begin towards the 2019 general elections. This was at a stakeholders meeting convened by the Jigao State Police Command in Dusi. Ibrahim Sadi reports. The stakeholders meeting attended by representatives of all political parties, INEC resident commissioner and security operatives, was to remind politicians that peace is panacea to successful electoral process. 
apart from creating a platform for liberal discussions between stakeholders. The meeting also seeks assurances from politicians that all political activities will be peaceful just as they were mounted on do's and don'ts relating to campaigns, meetings, and other political processions. Police in Jigawa assured that they will continue to be neutral and are political, advising politicians to exhibit high sense of decency, maturity, and run issue-based campaigns. We shall carry out all our activities, political activities, in accordance with the provision of the law, so that the civil atmosphere of the state could be maintained. The government said government, INEC, and National Orientation Agency also had their inputs. I call on all political parties and candidates to go about their campaign within the ambit of the law in order to secure success of the 2019 general election. So whatever we do, we need to maintain that peace so as history cannot judge us in a negative way. Politicians seeking political offices pledge their support to security agencies to have a peaceful 2019 general elections. In Dusi, Ibrahim Saini, NTA News. A high-tech industrial farming technique has been introduced to boost tomato production in Kaduna State. Governor Nasr Ahmad Erufai inspected one of the trial farms located along the airport route Kaduna. Abdullah Mohammed completes the report. Kaduna remains the 14th on the list of the global major tomato cultivating countries. It harvests an estimated 18.8 million metric tons of the crop per annum translating to about 65% of the tomatoes consumed in the west coast of Africa. The country's ranking may change soon as farmers across one of the major tomato-producing states are pressing up towards inculcating a new farming technique that could multiply harvest. One of the trial farms capable of producing 50,000 metric tons of tomatoes per hectare was inspected by the Kaduna State Governor, Marlon Nasser Ahmed Erufai. He described the project as a gold mine that could change the fortune of farmers in the state. Many of our farmers around the area that they operate will benefit from the technology as well as the extension services. Our own Minister of Agriculture will also learn and uh, mainstream this throughout the state by God's grace. The new technique will not only improve harvest but quality of the tomato which will make it suitable and attractive to investors interested in processing, putting an end to post-harvest losses usually experienced by farmers. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. Federal government is engaging 275 youths in Katsina State in various agricultural enterprises under the Fadama Tree Graduate Unemployed Youth and Women Support Program. The beneficiaries who are drawn from the three senatorial districts of the state are undergoing a revalidation process to ascertain their eligibility. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa has the details. The program was conceived in line with the federal government's drive towards job creation among the teaming and employed youth and boost agricultural production for sustainable economic development of Nigeria. The youth were subjected to a two weeks intensive training on their choice enterprise that include fish, poultry, livestock and crop production. Deputy Governor of Kasino State, who doubles as the Commissioner of Agriculture, Maniri Akubu, represented by the Managing Director, Kasino State Agricultural and Rural Development Authority, Ibrahim Shoh Musa, stated that their administration has designed a template on agricultural restoration, which is being religiously implemented to complement President Muhammad Buhari's economic diversification initiatives. This project has come in to assist the use and other farmers that are engaged in various farming activities. Kazan State for the Mal 3 coordinator Bashir Balazongu stated that eligible candidates are to receive between 800,000 and 1.5 million naira direct into their bank accounts. The Padama guy cannot use the money that is going to be sent in that yep. account till with clearance from the state Padama coordination office. The beneficiaries will be monitored and mentored for a period of two to three years, after which they will be allowed to run their enterprises in Kazna, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. And that is the size of our contribution from Kaduna. It's back to you, Vivian, for more on the nationwide. Abdullahi. Thank you, Abdullahi. We'll now go on a second commercial break. Nationwide continues shortly.
These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. 2019 elections are coming. Do not let yourselves be used by politicians. Do not allow your emotions go haywire. Do not be a tool to cause mayhem. No election matter is worth the destruction of lives and properties. Be wise. Don't be a violent Nigerian youth. Don't get involved in any act of violence. Your future is at stake. Shun violence during elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thank you for staying tuned. News reportage that will be in tune with global best practices was the focus of a two-day meeting hosted by the News Directorate of the NTA for heads of news across the country. The meeting was part of the series designed to prepare the news managers on what is expected of them in the coverage of the 2019 general elections. Akim Dairo's report is hereby presented. Doma has been a television journalist for decades, but could not hesitate even for a moment to learn more about the art of news coverage. He joins all the top news officers of the NTA for a workshop to equip them ahead of 2019 election. It's a good thing that we are reminded of what is expected of us when we go back to our various station. Nigerians are looking up to NTA as a major a medium, especially now that the elections are past approaching. The importance which NTA attaches to the workshop informed the attendance of top management, where the executive director of marketing presented the director general's message. We open our ears, eyes, and of course all uh, uh, available resources to make sure that once news breaks, of course, 